Hello YouTube, today I'm not in the garage, I'm actually in my student's apartment and I decided to record a video that I should have recorded for a long time ago but uh, some stuff came in between uh, so today seems to be the day it's nothing uh, fancy really I simply made a small PowerPoint presentation uh, trying to illustrate uh, how I hooked it up so plan is to go through the slides one by one and I will try to describe what I did um, on each slide and if one is interested one can easily pause the video and uh, take a look at the, each of the slides uh, a bit longer so what has kept me busy has been my grandparents uh, summer house and they had some issues with uh, the electricity so I had a look at it and here are some examples of uh, what I found here we can see two, two, two wires um, melted together to one Pretty cool, but uh, not super good uh, in a house. And here we have another one. Um, I don't know what happened with this one at all, but um, doesn't look too safe. So, yeah, that kept me busy. I'm soon uh, done with their house. I think I have two or three days left and um, then I can continue on my projects in the garage the manual mill and the lathe project and do some more 6040 videos um, but yeah let's uh, have a look uh, at my PowerPoint presentation all right so on the first slide I have two pictures of one of my micro step drivers and what is important to know is that there are some um, dip switches on the side of the driver and these are used for setting uh, settings according to this chart here and uh, this chart here so switch number one two and three are being used for setting the micro steps so if we take a reversed approach um, we can see that uh, one is set to on and uh, two and three are not set to on which means that they are set to off so if we take a look at the chart here we have on here uh, off and off so we are at my cruise step setting number four with the dip switches set like this four five and six um, depends on uh, which motor one is using I bought some uh, NEMA 23 stepper motors and uh, they are on three amperes so i set the uh, switch number four five and six to off 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 so if we take a look at the chart off 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 i use uh, this setting so if one um, is a beginner might be good to know about these dip switches and how to use these charts. So on the next slide we have um, here an input value of uh, 12 to 32 volts on the breakout board and um, on the micro step driver um, it's between 9 and 40 volts of direct current so I went with a 24 volt uh, D 
DC power supply since I am a student so that meant that I could use the uh, same power supply uh, for both the micro step drivers and the breakout board and uh, I choose to buy a 350 watt uh, power supply since it uh, would handle both the step motors and the um, breakout board and some more. If we take a look at this picture we have a very small micro step driver up here. Two magnified pictures uh, of the terminals of the micro step driver. One stepper motor, the breakout board, two magnified pictures of the terminals of the breakout board and uh, one power supply. So I started off by connecting uh, some power to the micro step drivers simply like this. Red one is positive, black one is negative or ground and um, then the breakout board also needed some power so same procedure uh, red is positive, black is negative and uh, the terminal is located uh, in this corner of the breakout board and after that uh, I needed to make a connection between uh, the breakout board and the micro step driver and this connection is made using uh, this terminal here on the breakout board which is located down in this corner and uh, this terminal on the micro step driver so I simply hooked it up like this it's pretty straightforward this gel here uh, is a bit tricky but there is actually two wires uh, going into this one this purple one and this yellow one and then the yellow one goes like this up to this one after that um, I needed to make a connection between the micro step driver and the stepper motor so I used uh, these terminals here and I hooked them up according to the wires on my stepper motor so these are actually the colors that I had on my NEMA 23 stepper motor the stepper motor came with no instructions I didn't really know which um, of the colored cables that should go in where here but um, after some uh, watching on YouTube I found a video with some guy that uh, gave a good tip can't find that video anymore though but uh, the tip was uh, that uh, if we take this one here as, as an example that um, let's say if these are the wires from the stepper motor one simply puts two of them together like this and uh, then turn on the shaft and if the resistance is increasing when uh, turning the shaft and the two of the wires are to, um, connected together then one uh, should have uh, found one pair so since there are two pairs here it doesn't really matter uh, which of them uh, are connected um, to A minus and A plus or B minus or B plus uh, they can easily be changed uh, in Mach 3 later the important thing is to have uh, one pair or one coil connected uh, so if you have um, an increased resistance um, when turning the shaft and have to cables connected together then uh, these two should be one pair so then one can um, connect them to B minus uh, or B 
plus or a minus or a plus doesn't really matter and um, then the other two should be one pair so let's go to the next slide okay so on this slide I will show you how I connected the power to the VFD and uh, the power to the spindle from the VFD so I used uh, a one phase 1.5 kilowatt VFD and a 1.5 kilowatt water cooled spindle so if we start up here I have uh, 220 to 230 uh, voltage in the garage one phase and then since the garage didn't have uh, an RCD I bought one just to be safe then um, from the power here I connected um, the phase as we say in my whole country or active to R neutral to T and ground to, to ground so that's pretty straightforward to connect the spindle to the VFD um, I connected um, pin number 1 to V pin number 2 to W and pin number 3 to U and um, I also wanted to ground the spindle and uh, since um, the fourth pin wasn't uh, connected to anything inside the spindle connector I had to make um, a connection between the metal housing of the spindle and the fourth pin so I did some soldering uh, inside the spindle and uh, yeah I have some experience when it comes to soldering but uh, I felt that it was uh, was pretty hard actually. Um, it was very tight, and um, the letters on uh, written on the spindle connectors is super small, and so unfortunately I couldn't get them on uh, on the photo. <clears throat> but yeah, um, think that uh, connecting the VFD and um, especially soldering the spindle should be uh, done by some professional so I don't recommend um, you guys doing like I do uh, doing it myself unless you feel super confident about it and know what you are doing and measuring and making sure that everything is correct then it's okay so let's go to the next picture and this is how I got the speed control um, for controlling spindle speed from Mach 3 and starting and stopping the spindle in Mach 3 so uh, up here we have a magnified pictures of the terminals um, that I used here we have them and uh, simply connected them like this to these two terminals uh, in the VFD that is located up here or down here it's also important to move the jumper from um, connecting these two pins uh, one step to the left so that it is like this if one would like to to use um, Mach 3 spindle control right so I then connected some micro switches and an emergency stop button and um, connected them to this terminal input port which is located in this corner and if we start off with the emergency button, it's super easy, just 12 volt and the other wire to stop. And 
when it comes to the micro switches um, one cable should go to 12 volt and the other one should go to one of the input ports so since I used six of the micro switches I had to use uh, multiple input ports it's also possible to choose uh, if one would like to have them uh, wired up as normally opened or normally closed. Normally opened uh, I think means that there is uh, current flowing in here all the time but if something engages with the lever then the circuit breaks and I felt that uh, that uh, that felt better so I went with that. Initially I also experienced some issues with the breakout board and uh, if you're interested in that you can just pause and read the text. But uh, long story short I did experience some, um, some issues that I have seen people have uh, with this breakout board on different forums. Um, the solution was to by or use a shielded USB cable and mowing the laptop. I think um, this issue was caused by some EMI from the VFD that uh, entered uh, through the USB port on the computer uh, and then caused some uh, strange errors uh, in the breakout board. So after moving the computer and uh, using a shielded USB cable I haven't experienced any issues at all and I've used it for like 20 hours or so without losing any steps or having any errors at all. So I do think that this breakout board is legit. Um, I would prefer the Ethernet version though since um, I do believe that um, the Ethernet cables are a bit more protected from EMI. Right, uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and um, please like and subscribe if you liked the video. See you.